welcome back. It's been a while since I made a video. I'm glad to be here. I hope you're all doing well in these unusual times or maybe not that unusual. Anyway, the subject of the video today is the best semi-automatic 22. You can imagine how many emails and messages I received over the years asking that exact question. What is the best one, Mike? So I kind of didn't answer that question. But before we get into that, I have to tell you about a, I, I think it's a really good development. I know the production people have worked really hard to get Patreon up and running and it now includes different tiers or levels. And you probably know more about these kinds of things than I do. But one of the things that you have access to now is called Discord, which you probably also know. And it's a way for you to join chat rooms and the gun community worldwide and I know there are a lot of people with a lot to say judging by the number of messages I have also just simple things like finding parts and finding stocks and finding things that you need uh, that I can't keep up with so um, I hope you're able to take advantage of of patreon and discord and now we'll get back to the 22 so um, what an enormous task and we're going to have to break up this uh, video because I went into my 22 volts, which I haven't done, and I had no idea um, how many 22 semi-autos I had taken an interest in. Uh, one of my close friends calls me a hoarder. Maybe I am a hoarder. Um, I have no shame. Uh, but I'm interested in all these different designs. And 22 semi-autos are particularly interesting and probably... Uh, one of the most popular firearms, I think, on earth. I think they're everywhere, ho hopefully legal in those countries that allow firearms at all. Uh, very interesting. So, um, but getting back to, to the which one is the best one, I just want to say before we begin all this, we, we're going to break it up into segments like I started to say. I don't know how many because I don't know how far I'm going to get with this video before the whole everybody collapses that's filming this thing um, but we'll try to cover everything there are some guns that you will miss on the table that I wanted to include but I, I just I can't fit them on the table is what it boils down to and uh, the best one like the best I mean this is a bit like the Oscars what is best picture there are so many different things but I have selected a best picture and it'll come at the end, I guess, after I walk you through all this. Um, but I had to be fair to all the designs just because there are so many excellent semi-automatic 22s. Maybe I'll start with the with the Browning semi-auto. I mean, like I said, if I give each one of these fair time, this will be a five-hour video. Uh, you know this rifle, a bottom eject, uh, Browning design. I'm going to be really unfair to our camera people and we're probably not going to be able to focus in on every one of them. By the way, I have this new mic. I hope you can hear me better. Um, we, we don't have very fancy things going on here in the studio and I, I think I've apologized about that before. It's a takedown, very reliable. You can feed it through the stock here. You can feed it through the stock at the back. It's a tubular feed design. It's easily the most slender receiver on any 22. And what I'll do is I'm just going to, for the sake of the crew here, I'm just going to keep talking and hopefully we can somehow make this whole thing work. Um, this is an interesting 22. This one's made by Kui. Pretty sure in Canada, Kui 64, but it's been offered by many manufacturers. It's just an excellent design. It has an aluminum magazine. I actually shot one of these. It was a Kui um, in my teen years. And I shot it so... This one is actually broken. Um, somebody sent it to me for repair. But uh, I shot mine so much that this is an aluminum magazine, which is kind of cool. But you can wear the feed lips away. And I, I wore out the magazines. But the rifle kept working anyway it's kind of honorable mention in this uh, Oscar race here um, you couldn't talk about semi-automatic 22s without bringing up 
the Remington Nylon 66. This is another one uh, which I probably fired, not this exact rifle, but I've fired these thousands of rounds. And they made a clip model and they made, um, or a magazine model, and they made it this tubular model. And I may be wrong, but I found that the tubular magazine models in any rifle tended to be more reliable, but there are exceptions. Um, anyway, definitely a phenomenal 22. If you own one or if you buy one, the only thing I can say is don't take it apart. These are tricky to get back together again. And there's really no need. They're kind of self-lubricating, very almost a maintenance-free um, rifle. And some were made in Brazil uh, and some were made in Canada. They're all good. I've owned them all. I think we made a video about this before. Uh, now we're getting into the really cool 22s. This is Gevarm, made in France. Vive la France, a wonderfully made 22. Fires from an open bolt, which you can see right there. Um, all steel, all beautiful machining. I don't know how you would get this to jam. Magazine's perfect. Everything runs the way it should. Expensive to make. That's why they stopped making them. Just a great rifle. I have this model, which is 22 long rifle only. And then the, the best one, which took me a, 20 years to find, is this gun, but it's in short. And with the 22 short, it's just like a typewriter. Um, the thumbnail has a picture of me on this video, has a picture of me with this Raylock uh, from United Kingdom. Uh, the realm, as I call it. Uh, what a fantastic rifle. Easily wins the most unique of all the 22s semi-automatics that I own. It's the only 22 semi-automatic that collects its own shells. It's a tubular feed through the stock or through the back. I've never had a jam with this rifle. You, the shells are accumulated, the empty casings, in the, in the action, and then you dump them out here. Um, like the Gevarm, it fires from an open bolt. And again, in the interest of time, I won't go into the details, but magnificent machining. Um, I did receive letters and messages from the UK that, you know, there were problems with determining when it's loaded and when it's not loaded. Uh, but every rifle has a certain risk to it. Um, I like the Raylock, like I said, easily the most unique. I actually don't know how they decided to make it. It's just so complex and expensive. Uh, this one you'll recognize. This is the 87B. I have to look. I'm just not smart enough to remember all the model numbers. Uh, again, I fired one of these. I don't know how many thousands of times. Just an indestructible gun. Some people call it the shark gill gun. You can see they they milled slots into the receiver. And the idea is that, because they're all blowbacks, um, so there's going to be a certain amount of unburnt powder and burnt powder that flies back in the action. And the concept with these gills, there's one here and more here, is that that debris can escape somewhere. And as you can see, this is a well-loved rifle, no butt plate. Uh, I don't know how many rounds have gone through it before filming. I have a little makeshift range over there and of course it works perfectly and the bore is still perfect and somebody added this very nice painted <laughs> painted on I see this a lot uh, painted on forehand tip because it's, we, you know we want it to look like an African express rifle I'm trying to be funny anyway um, oh now, now we're getting into the realm of ultra accurate this is actually this is CIL Canadian Industries Limited, but they just imported um, this Anschutz, which is the model 470. There may be different model numbers. I don't know. Oh my goodness, what an what a what an accurate rifle. I guess Anschutz just knows how to make barrels, like perf perfect barrels. Uh, this one uh, is it shoots like a target rifle, and I, I've, I've taken all other optics off these so that you can see the action. This is an aluminum frame. 
None of these, except for a couple that we're going to look at, are really spectacular receivers. This one is a little more compelling uh, because of the, the two-piece stock design. The feed is good. Actually, everything's good about this Anschutz if you can buy one. It has a great stock design. I always thought that this was the most comfortable of the different stocks that manufacturers made. I think this is long ago out of production. Uh, now we're getting into some heavy weights. This is very specialized. This is, uh, sorry, we don't have much room here at all. And this isn't like even half of them. Uh, Harrington and Richardson Reesing 22, you could see you work the action from in here. Uh, I'll do that again. So I'm just moving the action from in there. This was designed to mimic uh, as far as I know, the M14, I have a Garand. It feels about the same as the Garand. It's got the same front sight. You can see how they designed it. I think this was like a troop training rifle. Uh, I was really lucky to get this, and they're, they're very hard to find. Even though it's got some wear, the bore is, like most 22s, excellent. And this, I mean, it's a full-sized rifle, and when you're firing, uh, except for the recoil, you definitely, you have a sense that you're shooting a Garand or an M14. Uh, just a beautiful piece. I put it on the table. This is not a contender for best picture, just because it's so scarce. It's a long rifle only. Um, it, you know, it was a purpose designed and a purpose built rifle, but just um, a fantastic one to own. This happens to be the deluxe model, which is even harder to find. Uh, now we're getting into the sculptures, like the incredible work from, I think this is Czechoslovakia still, it doesn't matter. They then changed to the Czech Republic and then they changed to Czechia, but there's something about that country. The firearms they make, um, I loosened it a bit. Uh, I don't want to take it apart, but the way that they think about how to make a firearm is different from other places. I don't know whether it's their universities or, you know, some cultural thing. This is the Model 511. Absolutely spectacular semi-automatic 22. Uh, getting hard to find. You take note of the short action. Just great. And then an even more amazing piece of work in steel. You know, we're used to making fancy shapes and so on out of wood but when you start looking at this steel receiver i think this would have to win some kind of oscar for for just the way the receiver is designed just just imagine milling this out it's not a casting uh, out of a block of steel um, actually i don't want to mislead you this is in 17 hmr i had the whole collection of them 22 22 Magnum, 17 HMR, and actually I have one, one of these in 9mm. I used to have two, but I sold one. 9mm Parabellum, or Parabellum, and um, yeah, just this, like I said, for if you want, th that on this side it says PPK, and on this size, side it says KMS 617. A lot of people write about, but the 22 is a different one. Anyway, for 17 HMR, this is one of the few semi-autos that can handle the pressure, um, which re generally requires kind of a delay to the blowback. It's a great, great rifle in 22 or, or any caliber. And then way over here, this is just kind of random, just because I frankly ran out of time. This is a Marlin 98. See the bullseye on the stock and um, it's a tubular fed. It's one of those rifles I take out. I also have an Ithaca. Well, I have so many. This is, a, this is just a great little 22. Nobody talks about these. I don't know why they stopped making them. And there are many Marlins. There are Savages or all kinds that are excellent. And then there are a couple that are missing from the table uh, that really should be here. But uh, And those are the Remington Speedmaster and the 550, Remington Model 550, and the Remington Model 550-1. And those 22 semi-autos are notable because they can shoot short, long, 
and long rifle. They're not the only 22 semi-autos that can do that, but um, they're certainly the best known semi-autos. And uh, just on a personal note, I worked in the far north, uh, which I recommend for every young fellow to do. Um, you know, everybody out there seems to be living in different times from what my life experience was. And uh, <laughs> there are some pretty amazing computer games, which I like too, but there's nothing better than reality. And I still remember being up in the far north with one of those Speedmasters Remingtons. And I just stuffed the tube, tubular magazine with longs and shorts or whatever I had. I wasn't, you know, studying guns. I didn't know that this uh, interest would sort of occupy me. And uh, oh, what a spectacular performer it was on all kinds of game up there, never jammed. I liked the shorts best. They were almost silent. It sounded like a typewriter. So those should be here, the Speedmaster and the 550. Uh, and the 550-1, which have a floating chamber, and you can read about how they accomplished that. But now we're reaching the moment where we have to declare, like, best picture, uh, best 22, and you knew the answer before I started. You just can't beat this rifle. Um, it's the Ruger 1022. <laughs> you probably turn off now, which is fine. Um, Rotary Magazine, I mean, this... This rifle is actually an industry, and I, you know, I speak to distributors and so on regularly, and I could have all kinds of magazines on the table. I could have all kinds of um, magazine releases. Many different companies copy this, this little 22. I mean, if Bill Ruger, who is no longer with us, could know how amazingly successful this rifle would become. It was, it was already successful while he was alive. Um, is it something like unheard of in terms of the action? No, it's just a, a, a straight blowback. But the biggest problem with a rim cartridge of any kind is feeding. And Bill Ruger felt that the solution was a rotary magazine. And that's what these have, is this amazing rotary magazine. They just never jam. Um, if there is a negative, and I don't even think it's a negative, you don't want to be stuffing anything else in here. Uh, sometimes somebody shows up with a 22 short or a long that they manage to get in here. Use long rifle, and that's what it's designed for. I think a company called Volkwartsen, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, they make a 22 short version, and actually I... I think that if Ruger made a 22 short, they would be shocked how well they would sell. But I guess maybe more of us would need to write them. Uh, there, th this comes in a hundred different versions, or that's an exaggeration, but takedown model, all kinds of, of uh, polymer stocks, and it's easy to switch to barrels. In fact, I have other barrels. Uh, I was at the range, and somebody had one that looked like a rail gun. Uh, like the barrel was as big as the receiver and the accuracy was phenomenal. They had one of those 36 power scopes on the rifle. So the 1022 um, wins the whole show. It's just unstoppable. I don't know how many million have been made, but if it keeps going, and it probably will, all things considered and all manufacturers considered, it may be probably the most common firearm of all time, I would think. They're just useful beyond belief. So that concludes our show for the evening. Um, I'll bring out the other 22s. We'll cover them. But we have camera people to care for here too. And before they fall down, I'll stop. Thank you for watching. Be sure to please explore that Patreon and Discord. I love it when people communicate and I love all your messages. Uh, but it's a big agenda, and I hope you can, you know, there are a lot, I learn as much from you, I think, as you learn from me, because you can't see the correspondence I get. Anyway, like I said, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.